the show where there are no penalties, nothing is offside, and everything is fair game. This is The Gloves Are Off. Hello and welcome to our final Gloves Are Off edition of 2015. I'm Moses Woldu and I'm pleased to be joined by this man, my co-host Andrew Brethauer for the final time this year. How are you feeling? I lasted the entire year. I can't. <laughs> you That's survived. That's a goal right there. You survived. So and this survived. man who knows a little bit of survival, I'm just joking, mind you. Lloyd Minor Hockey <laughs> GM, Daryl Wagner, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Yourself, Moses? Not too bad. Glad for you to join us here in our final edition here of the year. Uh, we had to pay some bills, so we had to make another edition of the show. So. <laughs> With that said, let's move on to the topics. And of course, uh, the biggest one uh, after Christmas was the whole talk about Peyton Manning and a Al Jazeera investigation uh, linking him to performance enhancing drugs as well as other uh, baseball players like Ryan Zimmerman as well as uh, Ryan Howard. And then you throw in a guy like, uh, I guess, uh, I won't say Clay Matthews, but several members of the Green Bay Packers were involved in it. Matthews provided anti-inflammatories by this one gentleman. But the main story, again, was talking about Peyton Manning and his potential use. Was this, I know we kind of talked about beforehand, was this more of a, a gotcha journalism type of story, or was there actually some credence to this? And we'll start with you, Daryl. Well, for me, I, I didn't really follow too much of it, so uh, I think maybe, yeah, it sounded more like a, get you hooked, get you want to look at something. Uh, don't know how much concrete evidence there is that he actually did anything. The man who actually uh, came in who said that he actually saw Manning receive HGH, uh, not necessarily taken himself, but was in the, in the mix at the Geyer Clinic while he was with the Indianapolis Colts, has now, who was a part of the report in Al Jazeera, has come out and recanted on, on YouTube in several statements as yeah. well. But what do you make of this from a journalistic standpoint? And I know this one, you've kind of been itching at the bit here, yeah. Andrew. From the journalism standpoint, it just seems like it's like, let's throw a big name and we'll get everybody rolling in because that's what we want. We want people to watch this. And who's a bigger name in the in NFL than Peyton Manning? You drop Peyton Manning's name in anything, people are going to swarm to that. And now you have this guy recanting what he said and he wasn't even working there. So now you're like, okay, now that just, to me, in a journalism sense, that taints your entire story because you've messed up one of the biggest, the biggest part of that. You drop Peyton Manning's name, you're saying he's involved in this and now that's wrong. So how am I supposed to believe you on everything else you've said? And we deal with that every day. You get one fact wrong, now I have to question everything that you write about or everything you guys talk about. It, that's the whole problem with this entire story. Peyton said no. The guy came out and said no. So do we believe the rest of it? That's the question. Okay, so did he lie in this investigation because one guy pretended to be an athlete trying to compete in the Olympics, one last chance, and that's kind of how they got the premise going and, and trying to talk about drugs, who they talk to, who do they supply their drugs to, various NFL and baseball players like we just mentioned. But I want to ask you, even if there is, there's no truth to this, say if there's no truth to this, how damaging is this to Peyton Manning's reputation? Well, I think it's going to have, it's going to question everything. I mean, you take the, the drugs and the steroids in, in Major League Baseball and in NFL football where the consequences, if, if you're not at the top of your game, are severe for you. So it's going to start questioning everything they do. I mean, is he Peyton Manning? Is he, is he that great? You know, what if he wasn't taking anything? Because there's always going to be that doubt. You're never quite sure. Uh, as you said, Andrew, who do you believe? Like, I don't believe it. But, you know, there's that part of us that says, well, maybe there is a little bit of truth into it. So that you're going to start doubting it. But I look over his whole entire career. If you look at it, it's pretty much the same. He's been the dominant elite player from start to finish. All of a sudden he starts taking it in 2011, and now he's become a dominant player. No, he always was that. So that's what kind of puts me on the side of believing Peyton Manning didn't do anything because he's been this type of player. What bothers me is now that this has come into sports and that – now we're tarnishing people's reputations and we have to ha continuously ask these questions. It's like every time now we're going to have a good athlete, a great athlete with an asterisk beside it because we have to do that now. In, in fairness, it reminds me of Peyton Manning's situation. You talk about a guy who's so great early in his career and then for whatever reason to be, I'm not saying he did, but I'm just saying would. It reminds me of Roger Clemens, a guy who had a amazing arm, was one of the most dominant pitchers for well over a decade, all of a sudden was let go, went to Toronto trying to rehabilitate his career, and it was around then when he was linked to taking performance enhancing drugs, ended up winning a Cy Young there, of course went to the Yankees, that sort of, you, you know the whole story. He was good before, and he 
I guess the longevity issue was the whole thing. Here you have Peyton Manning and his, I guess, quest to keep his career going. Uh, I guess that was the, the biggest thing there. All right, uh, we'll, we'll move on to the Canadians at the World Juniors. Boxing Day is always a great time, a little bit unusual that they face the United States to begin, but that's how the schedule went this time. And uh, Canada ended up losing to the U.S., so they were down a hole, ended up coming back, uh, slow start at the beginning against Denmark, ended up taking it to them. And I know, Daryl, you said they played the Canadian way and it won 6-1. And then you look at their, uh, their way they play against Switzerland. Is there any cause for concern about Canada? Do they not look as dominant as they used to? What would you kind of attribute that to? Well, I don't think they're as dominant as they were last year. They don't have, they don't have the, the big name, the, the teams there, right? They've got a couple of good players on their team. I wouldn't worry about them because that goal that was deflected in against U.S., I mean, come on. I, the defenseman doing what he did in front of the net, there's no place to be batting at a puck with your stick when you're that close to your goalie as a defenseman. So I think that rattled Canada, and that's why they lost that game against the U.S. They just... You know, one silly mistake and, and it just snowballed on them. Uh, but I wouldn't worry about them. I think they'll be fine. Uh, I'm expecting to see them in a gold medal game. My I, confidence there. Andrew? My worry comes from the fact they haven't had a lead to start a game yet. Every single game they've been behind and they've had a trail. And you start getting into the preliminaries and you have that on. A goal in the medal round, goal in the playoff round, you're down by a goal is a big difference than being down in the preliminary game. So I'm worried when they start going up against, say, the Swedes and Russians and Finland teams, when it all actually matters. That's when it scares me about what, what this team's capable of. Like you said, they're missing a lot of big names. There is no, there's no big name. There's no Max Domi this year, that type of player. Anthony Duclair, there's no Connor McDavid we don't have. There is no superstar. This is going to be a collective group that has to do it. And so far, they're getting by, I don't know, not on, not playing Canada way, not the way we've been used to seeing, let's say, in the years past could it be because they're playing on bigger ice surface and in europe they haven't won there in quite some time is that a possibility of why it's different well it would, would have some effect on them absolutely the last how many have been on in north america so the smaller ice surfaces um i don't know i just look at too though this is their first you know for blackwood this is their first game for the goalie right like i mean he sat in the stands the first two serving a suspension right so give him a game or two to get back into shape as well so I, I don't worry about them. I, I agree, Andrew, they're, it's going to be by committee. Yep. Uh, they're going to have to score by committee and, and win a, as a team effort. When you talk about a team effort, let's move on to the uh, Max uh, AAA tournament, one of the most prestigious ones. Uh, you could argue in North America, and it just so happens, the uh, Bandit Pipeline Bobcats, the AAA team here, has had a fantastic run of late. Is this a team that is capable of running the table the way they've played their first three games, uh, outscoring their teams, and I just mean outscoring their teams big time? Is this a, a good sign of a team that's going to run the table? We'll start with you, Andrew. I think it's they are the team that can run. They're the best team going in the tournament. If you look at everyone who's there, besides the fact that they're beating people on the scoreboard, they're beating people by their goalie. Like Austin McGrath's yeah. playing outstanding, two shutouts so far. Yeah. Best goalie easily right now in the tournament. So when you're playing that good of offense, which this team is easily perfectly capable, and now you're playing that good of defense, and if you look at it, like Ty Smith scoring crazy points as well, and you have your goalie playing that well, you're set up for, you're, you set yourself up to make this an easy run to the final. Yeah, this team has been being built for a few years. If, if you really, you know, I mean, with Travis behind the helm, I mean, he's a, he's a great coach, and he's had these kids. He took this, basically this core of kids to, to the Bantam AAA uh, Nationals, right? I mean, the Westerns. He, he's, he's got the talent there. They've got the belief. Yeah, I, I believe this team, it, it can win the whole tournament. They, they are just that dominant at, at every avenue that they turned. And very quickly on the PWM Steelers, uh, on the girls' side, they're going there. I don't know if it was just more so of filling the teams. You don't want to say that about these girls because it's prestigious. Uh, tournament nevertheless and you know every kid wants to go there and it, it's, it's a great opportunity uh, do you see maybe this as a a sign of, uh, of something growing or is this just one of those years where it's it's just not as strong as say years prior where they had girls like Ganser and and some of the others that were the, the, the Rosses right that were just so phenomenal a few years ago yeah. Well, the girls, the girls program itself, as you may be aware, is under complete review in, in Alberta anyhow. So, I mean, we're very happy to have our girls there. Uh, they deserve to be there. They're working hard. They may not have the end result 
uh, of, of showing all the victories, but that's a team that's working hard, trying their best, uh, and hopefully, you know, enjoy themselves and, and take this as a learning experience at that tournament. And from my perspective with minor hockey, we're really hoping that we can show Alberta that, that you know, again, I'm going to put a plug in, we, we need and we want to retain our female AAA franchise in Lloydminster. For sure. And, and this team and can do it. they're not getting blown out. That's the other thing. No. If you look at what they're losing by, losing by two every game, that's the same they're losing that's at That's a home. goal and an empty netter. Yeah, yeah, and that's the same they're losing here. They're not getting blown out. This yeah. isn't like, yes, they've taken a step back to say they don't have those elite scores anymore, but yeah. they're not... This isn't like we're losing every week eight nothing seven one. It's, you're losing by a goal, an empty netter. That's how they're losing. So, yeah. it's great they've gone there. And if you've considered they're a fill-in team, as someone would say, they're playing better than a fill-in team. That's for sure. All right, guys, we're gonna take a commercial break. No fill-ins here, by the way. You guys do an awesome job. We're gonna take a timeout and return with more gloves are off.